Welcome to the Ages of Rock podcast with your hosts, Bill Algie, Dennis Talbot, and Alan Tate. We are three guys who have one thing in common, a love of rock and roll. Our goal is to talk about all things rock. We hope you find this show intriguing, funny, and occasionally highly opinionated. Enjoy. All right. Welcome to the Ages of Rock podcast. This is episode number 231. Um, let's see. There's only two of us. Actually, and, a, there's three and, a, because... and a lurker, a lurker in the back, which is Rod, which is Dennis's buddy. Yeah. And um, this is probably going to be a shit show. So, <laughs> Alan... Actually, Alan is, oh, yeah. Alan, is... <laughs> Alan is having a shit show. That's why yeah, maybe, I don't know. Him. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. He's getting ready he... for. Something. Yeah, he's he's having some. He's prepping. Yeah, prepping. That's what he's doing. He's prepping. So anyway, yeah. um. On tonight's episode, we have the band called The Great Affairs. They're out of Nashville, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. We have Denny Smith, who's the lead singer and writes most of the music, and Kenny Wright, who's the drummer. And um, they're going to be on to talk about their new record. And um, they're gonna, you're going to ask me what the new record's name is. And for the life of me, it's called uh, uh, Everybody so Moves, Nobody, Nobody gets, gets Hurt. hurt. Yes. And this is a great record. And hopefully we'll be seeing these guys live in October. That'd be great. And yeah, they're, they're coming to Evansville. Hopefully it'll it'll continue to stay scheduled. It's at the Boken Lounge, and I'm going to be really interested to see these guys live. Yeah, that'd be good for sure. I've really been listening to it a lot and enjoying it. And uh, good, good, good bunch of guys too. It was a real fun interview. You're going to like it. Yep. And, uh, so music news. I was trolling around and just typed in music news. So I got right. came up with this website called called consequence of sound.net which i don't know what it is but right. it has some decent music news on it so i thought we'd I'd share it cool. um i have none <laughs> yeah dean D, well you know it's kind of slow right now right um d snyder slams moronic anti-maskers who shouted twisted sisters we're not gonna take it hmm. so apparently he's for all for masking hmm. so he's a little pissed off so i thought that was kind of interesting that yeah. They're they're shouting, we're not going to take it. I wonder, mm. they look fairly young, so I wonder if they even know who D. Snyder is. Probably have no clue. Probably not. Probably it's, that, not. it's a good chance. And the right. other thing was just a couple things on here I thought were pretty pretty interesting. Mm. Um, the other one is um, Kanye West urinates on Grammy Award during his <laughs> latest tweet storm, which I don't know don't about mind. you. I don't but mind. It, it doesn't I bother me at all. Yeah, I don't know how the hell he got a Grammy to start with, so – Right. But he's going to get in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You know right. that. Oh, probably. Hopefully that's he's just, on it, too. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can get Ozzy to come on back over. You know, Kanye <laughs> kind of makes me proud when he starts peeing on stuff that I don't like. You know? yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's good for and, something. And, and, yeah, exactly. And other, other than that, this is pretty much just, yeah, there's not a yeah. whole lot of stuff on here. Yeah, they're just making uh, yeah, 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 I don't know. Oh, well, another, <laughs> another, another topic here is... Marilyn Manson on Ozzy Osbourne, he had this strange mystique that he never really escaped from. Hmm. I've still not watched that uh, Ozzy. Uh, well, isn't that like the pot calling the kettle black? Yeah, yeah no kidding. No, he's, he's a fruit loop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, up. he's a bird. Okay, well, whatever, man. Post toasty. Crazy ass. <laughs> there you go. Do some more drugs. See how and that I'm works not out talking about Ozzy. Or I'm not talking about Ozzy. Either. No, 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 no. <laughs> We're not talking about Ozzy. We're not, that's for sure. So um, let's see. You've got like a stack of vinyl, right? No, I only got I only got four. I got three in the mail today, okay. one yesterday. So. And I only got and I only got one. So we're gonna get right. this over with, and yeah, Alan quickly. doesn't have to suffer through this. He's yeah, exactly. suffering He's his right. own way. So um, we will. Uh, <laughs> that poop head. <laughs> uh, you know. What are, All right. Yeah. So anyway, I got a I got an Amazon gift card the other day. So I went I went batshit nuts. Crazy! You bought, bought three yeah. things. I bought four, I bought four <laughs> things. Oh, okay. So uh, I finally got a copy of, and uh, sorry, the, the the plastics kind of yeah, cool. Like Rush Moving Pictures. This is the uh, two hundred uh, two hundred gram. It's one hundred eighty gram, but I suppose I'm like, wow, what happened? They get that twenty extra gram. Well, uh, tw- Rush has been doing that, but anyway, I've, been, I've never mm-hmm. I've never had this on out al- on an album. So that's actually I one also, of the few Rush records I actually have. Yeah, I like. I only it. have two. <laughs> that's one of them. And then I got uh, I got. ACDC's oh. hotter or hotter than hell, my way to hell, and uh, been wanting that for a long time. So got that one. 
Uh, and I got a rebought uh, on 180 gram uh, Queen Jazz. Oh, I've, I've got a copy of that original copy, but I uh, just you know. How much did you pay for that? Because the original copies are going for like 20, 25 bucks or something like that. Uh, yeah, brand new, uh, 20 bucks. I, I paid uh, right at 20 bucks for each one of these albums on, okay. through Amazon. I think one was 18. I don't remember. And then I got the 30th anniversary vinyl edition, 180 gram of. Diary of a Madman. Oh, I've been wanting that one too. So, cool. So, got some good classic albums. This one here says it's in it's it's premium vinyl pressing HQ one eighty record technology. Hmm. So I don't oh, know. Something, I have no idea what that is. It's supposed to. It's probably going to sound really good. What do you? Okay, what'd you get? <laughs> it's probably going to sound really good. <laughs> I bought. Um. So I do. I watch some uh, vinyl auctions. Usually, like tonight, I'm at eight o'clock tonight, which is in a fifty minutes. Oh, I'll be. Is, yeah, I'll be sitting my butt down and watching um, Gary Brufak and his wife sell records because mm -hmm. it's this, this just fun to watch. Anyway, um, so right I picked too. this up from him a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's called Sonic Bullets, something I've never seen before. So oh, it's yeah. a compilation record, um, and it came and it's interesting because it's the it's the brand is Realistic, which is the which is the Radio, Radio Shack, Shack mm -hmm. brand. Um, it says high definition, half mastered, half speed mastered which I thought was pretty interesting, but um, it's got um, Any Way You Want It by Journey, Boogie Wonderland by Earth, Wind & Fire, More mm -hmm. Than a Feeling, um, Toto's 99, uh, Dream Police by Cheap Trick, Two Tickets to Paradise. It's got some really good stuff on it. I listened to it good. earlier tonight. It's, good, it does sound really good. So I don't know if it's, and it's in really good shape. So that's- yeah, Radio that's Shack used to have a lot of those uh, test pressings they were called and they were- Yeah, yeah and inside uh, here, it's got something that talks about that. I haven't really you read You can actually it, set so. your stereo up and, and yeah. they had records just for that. You know, oh, that's right. Here. I remember that. That's you know, right. Here's your low. Here's your high. It should be this, should be that. Yeah. You know, that kind of bullshit. Yeah. But, uh, the interesting thing about it was I what got. What year was that? What, what year was that put out? You know, I don't know because the re the music on it is from all over the place. So see, Radio Shack, from, does, it doesn't even, does Radio Shack even exist anymore? I know. I don't think it exists anymore. It, this must have come out in 81 because it says 81, okay. but the but the other copyrights on it are. 72 76 77 79 80 and 81 it's so a, it's a it's a uh, yeah it's been out for a little while okay yep anyway Alrighty. it's pretty cool but the interesting yeah, thing is cool. gary shipped this and it was what it was shipped between two records right and then wrapped in cardboard and then inside of a box <laughs> so what, the, so what like, was the two the two bonus records you got anything decent <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, junk love junkie records. The music is the drug. Mm. D love presents wet the prayer. Um, the epic what side? This side is epic story of love mix. And then the I'm glad you asked me this because this is <laughs> funny shit. Uh, that side right. is original soaked mix and beat a pella. Right. And then <laughs> that's oh, I got to bring something up to you real quick, and then I'll, <laughs> I'll be done. We can get on to with the interview. Um, this week, I saw a thing on Facebook. It was really funny. Uh, I love Gilbert Godfrey. And Gilbert <laughs> Godfrey. Funny. Gilbert yeah. Godfrey is reading the lyrics to Cardi B's WAP. Oh God! And it's the funniest thing I've ever heard. Now I've never heard the. I never heard the song. I never oh, knew it's... of it. I went to YouTube that day at lunch, and I started watching the vid, the explicit video. It's the biggest piece of garbage I've ever, and it's a nasty piece of garbage. Oh, I mean, she's nasty. Just, it is she's nasty, just, man. Where, you know, the PMRC got fucking batshit nuts over just, <laughs> you know, like a curse word here and a curse word there. They would lose their minds now if they were doing that. <laughs> she's a woman. It's, and she's it's, just like, it's, it's like, ridiculous. It's just trash, man. But if you get a chance, watch the Gilbert Godfrey thing. It's hilarious. Yeah, if nothing else for some fun, right? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Cardi right, B is so, not on my li playlist. <laughs> yep. Me. No, me neither, man. All right. So All let's right. give Denny and Kenny, they rhyme. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, a listen. Go. Oh. Check it out. Hey, folks. We have got Kenny Wright and Denny Smith from The Great Affairs. How are you fellas doing? How you doing, man? Good. What do you know? I got your names right on the first try. You did. It's impressive. <laughs> that is a true miracle. You guys have no idea. <laughs> Actually, you said it once before we started recording. So you I said it <laughs> twice correctly and once incorrectly on purpose so that I yeah. would get it right. Gotcha. All right. On, gotcha. on point. So, so anyway, uh, Denny, yes. tell us about your band, where you're from, and all of that good stuff. Well, currently, we're in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, 
he's the only true Nashville native. Uh, Patrick and I, our guitar player, uh, we're both Central Illinois guys that have been down here for about 20 years, 20 some odd years now. Um, and then our bass player, Matt, he's from Paducah, Kentucky. Oh. Uh, he's been here for, he's been here for a good long Paducah. while too. So uh, yeah, we operate out of Nashville. That's our home base. I was just there. You guys didn't invite me over for a drink or anything. I mean, literally got home. Oh, I, did, man. I was. I got. Was there Saturday and Sunday? You didn't. You don't know where you've been. So what, come on. So when on. you say Central <laughs> Illinois, where are you talking? Where are you talking about there? Uh, Peoria area. Okay. Uh, I've actually got a record shop in Pekin, Illinois, that I've had for twenty-three years. I wow. Think. We can talk about that too. Yeah. <laughs> my, this is our new best friends. Apparently. <laughs> yep. No, my, no, my, my, one of my best friends, Rodney, who I played in a band with, he, um. He, he's from benton illinois which is yeah southern know. illinois yeah uh my actually my so you'd be like it. great grandmother the, her their whole family's from benton illinois okay so, so we yeah. play in marion okay pretty often, which is like right almost butts up against that so yeah, yeah we go exactly all the time. yeah awesome cool. so actually, I have a 78 chevy van that broke down in front of the prison <laughs> oh, yeah i know <laughs> and we had to put it along to her and grandma's <laughs> house this is like a 1990 <laughs> five and leave so, it there for the junker to come all the way i was like eh, that sounds like a song it should, should have been <laughs> <laughs> broken down chevy like van in front of a prison you know, sounds you, like a song <laughs> i just know we were driving by that prison on the shoulder yeah with smoke rolling out of this thing and i thought this is the lamest it's an escape <laughs> effort of some kind yeah because it, it, it noriega was there for a while he, they have some. Oh, really? I mean, they had some high. They had some high profile people in that. I mean, place. it's clearly. I mean, it's got the. the full it is a. It's a max. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a max. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. <laughs> well, so Kenny, have you lived in a van and down by the river there in, <laughs> <laughs> in Nashville no, or anything exciting? <laughs> Thankfully, I've uh, been uh, gainfully employed most of my life, and I have. Oh, there you go. You know, pretty responsible guy. Wow. Cool. Welcome to the not responsible I've lived club. Lived in many a van, but just as it traveled down the road, not uh, parked in front of a prison or anything. Awesome, that's cool. I like your shirt, man. That's that's a uh, looks like a, an Ed shirt from uh, our buddy. Nope, it's not a click T-shirt. No. Oh it's wow! Not a I already asked that before you got on. <laughs> mother's. Cool. But anyway, mother's know original. Where, there we know where you to go. get That's some. original. We know where to get. You somewhere. guys have a new album you're getting ready to put out. You want to talk a little bit about it? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the Great Affairs. There's some visual aids for you. Uh, Everybody moves, nobody gets hurt. Uh, comes out October second. We've been spent the better part of the last year and some change working on it. Uh, we put out three of the songs like as an EP thing. Uh, middle of last year and then we had a couple little hiccups came along i ended up having to have uh, surgery on my vocal cords so we had to take a few months mm -hmm. off and then as soon as we got the all clear to get back to the gigs and finish working on this thing uh this other thing happened so we just took that time to finish up the rest of the record you know we kind of hemmed and hawed about maybe not put it out until this stuff had kind of settled down but we'd already told people it was coming so here it is we got a few more weeks and it'll be uh it'll be upon us so we went ahead and wrapped it up but it's a it's a i think it's a solid batch of tunes man it kind of covers a lot of bases more than our last record did probably it's got a little bit of extra flavor sprinkled in there that the last one was more of a straightforward rock record this has got some pop stuff on it and some americana stuff uh but yeah I, I think people will dig it if you like you know kiss and rick springfield slam together with a little cheap trick and some tom petty sprinkle on there uh if that makes any sense whatsoever that's kind of some of the stuff we threw in the stew well and i hear also on the album i hear um some tesla Oh, yeah. I hear some black crows in there i hear some old um actually almost faces rod stewart type stuff i I, I, like, uh, what I was I, listening i was listening to it today and everything that we were i'm sorry go ahead i said that's just kind of my flavor that i bring to it man you know uh, uh when i first started playing with these guys then he said man i don't really that's not in my wheelhouse and right 
clearly in yours. Uh, so why don't you, you know, why don't you bring some of your things to the band? And so that's kind of where I, uh, uh, when, when, when we're making records and stuff, and instead of trying to tread on the same area that, you know, Denny's obviously so great at, I, I just sort of bring that uh, element to the band. And, and Patrick is really into that. So we kind of write some stuff together. And uh, so sort of not knowing what you guys wrote, because I only got what what's on, I was listening to. Oh, you got the promo. Yeah. 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 So it was High on Rose. One of your songs, or one of the ones you worked on? High on Rose, Patrick and that I wrote. High on Rose is High, High on Rose is the is the one I was like going. This is early faces. This is early Rod Stewart. Yeah, but then it, it also has that little blend of the the kind of the Black Crows in there. But it does have the faces in it. I mean, it's just I I, I, yeah, I like definitely. It. I mean, it's that Suscord riff thing, and um, you know, Patrick was kind of hearing like a a Peter Frampton type thing when he yeah, brought it to me. And I was kind of hearing more like a Doobie Brothers China Grove type thing. Uh, and I don't think we got either one of them, but it really, to me, it ended up sounding more like a Dress to Kill era Kiss type tune with, uh, you know, Steve Marriott maybe singing it or something like that. So sure. I'm happy with the end result. I just don't think it was what either one of us really slingshotting for when it's all said and done. But I, I dig it. I mean, I think it came out real well. Uh, and uh, but yeah i can definitely uh, uh agree that it does have some of those uh faces elements to it and and, and like i said nothing to take away from the album because like i said you know being all original tunes i mean it is it is your it is your sound i'm just you know, whenever i say it, it kind of has this flavor to it it's oh not, no yeah it's, definitely it's, not. It's, it's, I mean, there is there is i mean because it, it goes, I mean, and actually it goes across the spectrum and which that, that's the thing I like about it. You go from one, you know, from the first song to the last song, you know, you've traveled, you, you're not just getting this three chord thing throughout the thing. You're getting, yeah. you're getting a rock song, you're getting this, you're getting some bluesy kind of stuff you got. And then stuff that sounds really new, almost, almost kind of, almost like a, I want to say an eighties new wave kind of stuff. That's got some of that, you know, the little sounds in the background yeah, you know, and then you got a heavy keyboard on one, and no keyboard. You know, I like that. It keeps it, it keeps you on your toes, and it keeps you wondering what's going to be what's going to come next. What's going? Yeah, I think next. rather than uh, try to make a record that represent one sort of style, which we sort of did on ten and two, we try to keep that sort of compact and make a real uh, concise record out of it. This time, we started out with this thing, sort of talking about maybe uh succumbing to that sort of uh online only let's just do an ep or a single or whatever but i think ultimately none of us really wanted to do that and there was all kinds of disparate musical styles that we had written these songs you know together and separately uh and we just said you know what let's just make a record and throw the uh, conventionality out the window and let's just do let's just make each one of these songs a thing and uh and we'll just try to um sequence them properly on the record where they make sense together as much yeah. as possible really and that uh but i mean it always sounds like us i think it always you know you can spot denny's uh voice a mile away and uh the it, it just it came out to me it seemed like a complete record regards the fact that it didn't every song wasn't stylistically uh the same yeah it's definitely not a uniform thing we we did that that last one we you know ten and two we it was a that was a concerted effort to make it we were trying to like make like like a rock and roll over where it was just a you know no this, frills type yeah thing. It's, we were, minimal overdubs and it was just a straight rock and roll record there was you know didn't really have a ballad or anything well we did have a, we did have a ballad but they had a hard luck woman. Um, so we tried to make it this easy to digest, all one thing. Not as much of it. This record's kind of like a some weird. It's just a bunch of songs that we really liked, and we just. Well, there's a different. I noticed a lot. I mean, I listened to I listened to the new record, and then went back and listened to, um, you know, to Ten and Two, mm -hmm. and then listened to a little bit of the stuff earlier. And you can tell definitely Ten and Two was. This is definitely a different, you know, different record than Ten and Two. Right. Um, and I like both of them. I think both of them are great. 
Um, the good part about this podcast, we talk about this all the time, is we get introduced to all this new music we can't find anywhere, and this is I, cool as yeah. hell. So I, 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 I literally, <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, I've a couple other people have heard this record too, by the way. Just so you know, I've That's not shared cool. it with anybody, but I was we no, were driving to Nashville right. and I was playing, and I'm like, we're interviewing these guys. You know, have, they're gonna they get these guys are gonna be on our podcast on Tuesday night. You want I and mean, you get to listen to this. So I, you, there That's were a few awesome. people that heard it too, so they all liked it. So or at least uh, the guy that was sitting up front with me that could hear it really liked it. So. It's pretty cool. Anyway, um, you know, I think that uh, I liked a lot of the, the the record had a lot of variation in it, and it wasn't like you were just listening to one long song. And I like that. Sometimes people get into where it just feels like it's just one thing. Um, and uh, you know, and we talk about skip, you know, s- skippable songs and stuff like that. Um, I there is I didn't see one. I couldn't find one. Oh, thank you. I, 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 if I found anything, dude, it was repeatable songs. <laughs> oh, I agree. I agree. And I'll, I'll tell you what my favorite song on the record is, and you probably won't believe that's the favorite, my favorite song, but it absolutely is my favorite song. I've listened to it about 500 times in the last week, so, um, but we'll get to that at some point. Um, so talking about that, what are your – what? and I know that you guys wrote it and, and stuff like that, and you played on it. Is there songs on here that you just – is there anything that particularly that when you go back and listen to it, you like we just nailed it on that song or that is what i was going for or, or or what you would say is your favorite on the on the album i mean uh, I, i'd like to think that i mean favorites you know that that's sort of subjective but i guess yeah i would like to think that everything that we tried for we nailed now whether or not um, everybody else feels that way I don't know but even if it wasn't you know it I just feel like we set out to make like we want this to be like this and this is our objective to complete the song I feel like each one of those tunes we we achieved that and that, I think that's one of the things that freed us up when I I would just said earlier, we weren't trying to make a specific type of record, you know, we could be real free with that. So, I mean, I got my personal favorites on there, uh, but I just feel like every tune we kind of hit the mark of what we personally wanted to hit the mark for. Now what everybody else feels like I can't speak for, but um, in my uh, heart of hearts, I feel like we, we kind of hit our stride on the things that we, we're really trying for so I'm, I'm pretty happy in, in that respect yeah that's like a that's completely fair because it's probably unfair of me to ask that of <laughs> you know uh no, it's, no, it's your brand new record which one's your favorite song all 10 of them dumbass that's my favorite build. songs <laughs> you know, it's, like, it's our destroyer which is complete it, it, it's our destroyer now, just it's don't say it's our destroyer right. don't ever say that <laughs> whatever, whatever you do don't ever say we just made just we, we made destroyer for the 14th time just don't ever they say would that. get this that's why i'm saying i only said that it's funny you say that but we did when we did the the record that Prior to ten and two, Dream and Stereo, we we called that our destroyer. That was it <laughs> all this crazy stuff on like never just to throw everything in. It was long. It did had all this, right. you know. And we just thought, what do we got to lose, man? I mean, we don't we didn't know if we were gonna sell five copies or five thousand copies. It's just let's just do it. We have all these songs. We got tired of trying to narrow it down, so we just threw them all on there. And let's it was not say that we think it's as good as destroyer. No, we're no, gonna, but. <laughs> We, but the it was your destroyer. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and, and you, as you guys know, it's we'll be out in 2025. Uh, but Walmart exclusive. We uh, in well, orange. You, you we know, just said, you know, the hell with it. We're gonna do as much production. We don't care if we can make it live happen or whatever. But we're gonna do it like we want to do it, and yeah. we're just gonna go really heavy on the production. We did, and then the next record, we said, you know what? Let's make. <laughs> our version of rock and roll over which is let's not go heavy on the production let's yeah. make this where we can pretty much play every one of these songs live right. and nobody would go well it's missing that or it's missing that and i think this record kind of splits the difference i mean we're kind of doing almost <laughs> half the record live or we, we will be doing uh, a bunch of this record live um so we can pull it off uh so it's kind of a right in the middle. Maybe it's our love gun. 
Right. Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you this. I mean, you, you were talking about earlier, you, you, when I said something about the, the row song I liked a lot and you talked about that was one. That, so how many of you guys actually write what, I mean, do you guys all write lyrics or is. No, the lyrics are just the two. There, uh, just the two. Okay. Just, okay. Um, but then musical wise, you guys kind of all combine and take, you know. Again, it's mostly Denny. Uh, I, I write, so, uh, I mean, I write a lot, but I don't bring sure. everything in. And I'm kind of uh, spoiled because he comes in with a hundred songs for every record that are all, each one of them is better than the next, man. You know, and I don't, I'm not nearly as prolific as he is. And then Patrick and I write some together. So right. I just figure, man, if we can get three or four songs per record, I, I feel like that's a, a real win. That's cool. For me, because frankly, I mean, it's tough to compete. Uh, every song he submits is great. Uh, <laughs> it's like, well, Denny, well, I, and, and one of the things, uh, too, I, I, I listened to this album over, actually both albums, I was listening to 10 and 2 plus the you know, new one. And I was listening to both of them and I was actually giving it, you know, instead of just that kind of that glancing listening to, I was listening to yeah. the lyrics. I'm a big Butch Walker fan and I love his lyrics. I think you and him write a lot in the, in the same similar as far as the way yeah. the lyrics work. I, I, and I, your lyrics are awesome. I, I really, well, he, I really like them a lot. I, I'm a massive, uh, and thank you very much for that. Cause that, you know, I've been in bands where people thought that didn't matter at all, but um, it makes a big difference, dude. I mean, you can, you can, me. I mean, that's, no. that's, that's fifty percent of it for me, easy, if not more. And uh, I, you know, I, I think Butch and I have a lot of the same influences. I don't think Butch has my records in his collection, whereas I have his. So it's <laughs> more likely that I have borrowed from him. Than right. Me, but well, uh, Butch is Butch has wrote a lot and gave it away to a lot of people. Or not give it away, but he's he's. Oh yeah, sold sure. it to people. But I'm I'm just saying your your styles, the way you write and the way your lyrics work together. You know, you're just not throwing. Some people, it seems like they just kind of throw a bunch of words together that rhyme, and you know, and throw a heavy tune behind it. Yeah, you know, I do the same thing too if I yes. wrote one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You your log mind. in your fireplace and you know shit like that. But but no, I mean, I, I just want to. When you really sit there, and, <laughs> yeah. But when, seriously, though, when you sit there and you start listening to your songs and you're and you're listening to it, that's what drawed me in a lot to the. When I was listening to you this week, I was like, going, God damn, I like the way the you know all the lyrics work out." And I could almost. It was it was really funny. The first time I heard like some of the songs, I was like going, "I I know what he's gonna say." You know what I'm saying? Because it was in my yeah. mind. I'm like going. I know where the song's going. It's, it was kind of odd, and then all of a sudden, it's like, yep, yep, that was good. <laughs> I like that. So yeah, I like I said, I've really, I've really got into it this week. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a cheerleader for you guys. Thank <laughs> you. And uh, yeah, because I've been taking it up to my buddy's house, and every time I go up here, he goes, "Who is that? Is this Black Crows?" It's like, no, it's not Black Crows. God damn it, it's the same. <laughs> it's the same guys I brought up last week. You just were, you're a little drunker now, you know. <laughs> so, right. That's how it, that's a text this way that will take right for sure. But anyway, so when's the last gig you guys done? We played COVID. a private party, uh, socially distanced, of course. Sure. We do it every year in Southern Illinois, um, in a big field behind a fan's house. They bring in a stage and we do a whole thing. Right. And we bus set up. Got the whole thing rolling, played about eight songs, and Storm came in, oh. and we left uh, Patrick and Matt to tear that down, and we got in the tent and walked around like troubadours and did it like a mariachi band, just the two of us. <laughs> How cool. Because we wanted to get paid, man. We had a gig to play, <laughs> yeah. so, you know, <laughs> we ended up playing for about two and a half hours, just wow. pulling random stuff out, you know, uh, stuff so, we, a lot of stuff we never even attempted to, to play before but we yeah it ended up being fun did do you have any um i saw the schedule so do you have any shows still on the schedule that you're doing or are you done no we've got um uh, two indiana dates yep for the end of the year we had a handful of things that we just hadn't we never posted them they we had just booked them that were kind of critical to getting this record done they're going to subsidize the whole back half of the recording process and getting the all the pressing done and stuff and those all evaporated uh, understandably but um these two were far enough out that we just kind of left them on there and as of right now they're 
we're going to Evansville on the third, the day after the record comes out, and playing uh, Boca Lounge. Yeah. And uh, and then we've got I one in Terre Haute. We may or may not. We don't know on that one yet. That's kind of mm -hmm. a, up in the air. So if I really don't see too much else popping up between now and the end of the year. But if it does, I mean, we'll look at it. I'd love to play if it's safe. But, you know, I just don't know. I'm, we usually take the back half of the year off anyway. Uh, and yeah. uh, so I don't know that it is any different than what we generally do. But uh, I certainly hope that we'll have a more you know, productive 2021 <laughs> and the landscape will be different than it has been this year. But I'm sure everybody hopes the same things. But it's up here for everybody. Yeah, no doubt. Well, well, just if, selfish. If, if, it, if it turns out that I don't have a gig on the night you were at the Boca Lounge, I'll be down there. Awesome. Dennis and I, I live in Evansville. Dennis lives next door in Newburgh. So. And I'm from there. And so so the reason I asked the, I asked the question specifically for that reason. <laughs> well, they, I, you know, it's funny because we were just uh, – I just – Matt does most of our booking. Our bass player is our, our booking agent as well. And he uh, – I had, had him verify the other day, asked him to call the club and see is this – you know, because it looked like everything was starting early, and we had this thing saying we're playing at nine o'clock, and they're not—they're only open till midnight, I think. They're—they've changed some. I don't know what the rules are there in Evansville, but um, we go on at eight o'clock, and they—you know—bumped it up an hour, I guess. But as far as I know, other than the maybe you have to have a mask on when you're not seated thing, like they do here in town, um, the gig is a go. So. We're gonna keep us informed because I said Alan and I will, will definitely be there if I'm not cut. Awesome, man. Yeah. Is it a Friday night or a Saturday night? Saturday night. Saturday night. Yeah. When is it? Saturday when? Bill Saturday. looks like he's coming down. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. What day was it? I'm sorry. Saturday October third. Yeah. October third. Okay. Yep. Unless I've got a Philharmonic that night, I'll go. So I what? I got season tickets to the Philharmonic. I actually I spread my wings. I got some Wow, look at you. Yeah, Don't I'm, say that shit on this show. <laughs> <laughs> we're not worried about credibility. No, there's a there's a law, there's a there's a there's a story behind this. I, I like going to the No, there's no story behind that. Uh, who doesn't even <laughs> there? I the made story a story is a, his wife bought tickets and said you're no, going. Oh, I this. said we we have a new conductor in town. I, I oh my god, are you serious? And we we're had they tried out five people. I saw three of the five. I went to three. Of the, I like going to Philharmonic. So just fuck you. So anyway, we. Uh, but this one guy, Roger, he's a really young guy and really good. I mean, I like the guy a lot. We went, I met him and everything. And I told, we're friends with the woman who is the president of the Philharmonic. And I said, if he gets in, I'll buy season tickets. And he got chosen. So I bought season tickets. So that's right fair. Right, there you go. And you know there what? You supporting. And you know, there's nothing wrong with you. Like I, love, we're just, I love I'm just busting your balls, man. I love you the know, I played in concert band when I was in high school. That's yeah. I played that? in band when I was in. We go have a school. good dinner beforehand. We go out, and we see some music, and then we drink some wine, and you know, hey, it's good. You gonna dress up for that? Is that like it's a, a totally no, different no, crowd? No, no, I wear yeah, jeans. Dress up for that. Oh, no, I no, wear you jeans. ain't wearing no jeans as a Philharmonic. Come I do on, all the time. Jeans all the time. He lives in Evansville. You can get away with that here. <laughs> it's at the victory. <laughs> no, I wore. No, I wore for the gala the other night. I wore my new black suit, but I wear regular jeans and a nice. You need to wear that suit again. You paid like eight hundred dollars for. <laughs> to the Philharmonic. It's a, it's a wedding funeral shirt. So, Alan, you probably got a question. We just been yapping yeah. the entire time. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> We're getting off subject. Go ahead. So, uh, getting back to the great affairs, are do oh. you guys have uh, any kind of labor support, or are you self funded and unsigned? Uh, we did the last record through Kibble Records. Um, Ten and Two was released through Kibble Records. This is we were DIY up until that point that was an experiment but part of the reason we streamlined that record and did made it sound the way it sounded was specifically to get fi find one of the indie rock labels to pick it up and and do it for us because we just never done that in, in the lifespan of the band so this new one after that experiment did not really yield the benefits we were hoping for we just thought we'd just go back to doing it ourselves so yeah this is all 100 percent in-house operation we're doing everything on our own so yeah just don't have paul stanley uh be the producer <laughs> yeah. he, well, that new new he loves that new england record so i mean that oh i, that I did yes uh, uh, yes thank you i love that uh, new yeah but who doesn't love the new england record is that somebody the, taking a 
Uh, the fist out there over the yeah, but it's also that's the orchestra guy that's championing. Yeah. Uh, I have five copies of that. Album. Oh my I love god! That. I love that. I love that. Legally, you, need one, you need six. I mean, every time I the, see it, it's like two bucks. I pick up another copy. I don't blame you. That's a great record. I mean, actually, uh, every time I go to a record store, they go. Okay, you paid ten. You paid five dollars for this record or seven dollars for this record. We're gonna give you this New England record for free. <laughs> actually, I was like, actually, you know what? You know what, sir? Take two New England records <laughs> because we're tired of this shit being in the store. All right, all right. Oh, don't be, no, don't be a kidding. hater. Don't be we're a not, hater. I'm just, I'm just kidding you, man. I'm just busting on you. No, no big Rich, deal. <laughs> actually, Rich. Rich from, I, mean, I got this motherfucker next to me. He's always fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I've all New England. Oh, Bill's always giving we're me shit about just, New England. Uh, I'm just always giving him the business. I love, oh, that's good I stuff in England. Got to meet Hertz Carson or uh, when was that last? Was it last year or two years ago in Indianapolis? Yeah, uh, two Kiss years ago. Up or, and yeah. it was awesome. They what, did. What, and then, what was he doing down in Indianapolis? He was. He came down and uh, he had a band together and they did some New England songs. They did "Don't Ever Want to Lose You." And it was him up there singing, and with a bunch of people. They yeah, had uh, singing and not playing the drums. I see. Like, yeah, he was. He was. He was singing, yeah. and they had. Uh, oh, they had. Uh, who else was it? Was it? Was it? Who else was up there? Oh wait, um, um oh, damn it, from um, Slaughter. Mark Mark Slaughter was up there singing. Oh, they got and a then, and then Rich Kozak from uh, Mr. Speed was up there singing along because he's the one that interviewed he, him. He's a real big. Uh, also a big uh new england, uh, new england fan. fan yep which he has a, some a little bit of a relation to you right because you were in a no yeah you were in a kiss tribute band right oh yeah yeah oh you yes the guy from this. Yeah, yeah i was in um hotter than hell did you play the in the, or the uh, nashville uh, convention everywhere you could think <laughs> no i mean the the official nashville convention when hotter than hell played that no 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 that was uh uh that was a creatures era tribute band one of uh, when it was uh, well oh wait i uh, know i i you I, I you're talking about the official convention, the convention? yeah the official no, convention. No, that was that was well before i was in the band but that was okay uh, but that was hotter than hell that played that probably yeah uh, i think it was that's i was I there and i don't remember <laughs> But you kind of had to know the, the the guy that ran the band. He was the Ace Freely guy. Uh, he was a salesman supreme, man. He was like P.T. Barnum, man. And he somehow got Gene Simmons to sign off on them being the official Kiss tribute band. And they were the guys that blocked all the shots for Detroit Rock City. And really? I, yeah. So that's... they Interesting. They were supposed to be in the movie, but... I think ultimately egos prevailed and, and uh, the guys couldn't uh, do the movie without having themselves in it. So they didn't end up making any of the shots, but there's right a shit ton of promo of Hotter Than Hell. And, that, and they did the whole uh, Playboy. Uh, remember when Kit, the Kiss Playboy right. thing? And that they uh, Those guys did all the makeup for the models and all that. Really? Stuff. And, yeah. Interesting. But I joined right after all that was done, and I did the second leg of the Real Deal tour. And when the movie came out, uh, I was in the band when when all that happened. We did we did a I don't know I did a year with those guys on the strength of that movie and stuff. But oh, cool. it started getting kind of watered down, and and I, right. I didn't really ever want to be in a tribute band. I just was doing it for sure because I'm a fan and because it paid real good to be honest with you but uh, <laughs> I, and then I, I played with a couple of other guys later on like uh and uh, alive too and stuff like that but, but yeah i did the old uh kiss tribute uh, uh circus there for a while it was fun and so what era was they what, what era was they presenting was it the 70 was it the uh, uh, man, it depends. Two, on your love gun man, man you know whoever had the best costume so <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of a potpourri kind yeah, of thing. Sometimes it was like uh, first. Down, Wait a minute, you're not the right guy. Uh, Love gun, or sometimes everybody's costume match. Sometimes it was kind of destroyer, rock and roll over. It just depends, man. I have to be That'd be kind of funny though. You'd be up on stage, you'd be like, "Hey, Gene, what 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 are you doing, Dynasty now, or whatever?" You'd be like something different. That is exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. Stop Stop like, Wait a minute, oh, wrong costume, dude. Yeah, it was uh, whatever the market would bear is 
what what we did. Man. I wore the same costume every time. So you didn't have multiples. You just had that. I didn't have multiples. Year. I had one one year. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. How, what what good memories though. That's that's cool. It was. It was great fun. I got to man. I played places that I probably never go to Otter Tail, Minnesota and shit like that. I mean, I, I never even heard of that place and I've never been to it since, man. But uh, yeah, places like that, you know, I've been all over the world doing stuff like that. So I'm not, I don't regret it a, a bit. Okay. So well, let, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll say, let's get back to their record. Yeah, no, I'm saying if, if so when COVID's over, what, what, what you guys is plan? Are we going to, we got to band. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> We're gonna do multiple. We're gonna go. Analyzer a tribute band. That's it. We're gonna go seventy-four <laughs> to two thousand twenty. We're just gonna really kiss. And then who you speak? There you go. <laughs> We're just kidding. No, anyway. I don't know. I mean, uh, if COVID's ever over, um, yeah, I guess we'll evaluate what what's happening. But I mean, I don't think touring is a responsible or profitable endeavor for any bands of our uh stature right now i mean that's my personal opinion but i don't see a lot of, uh, we really have to glean the maximum amount of uh dollars out of our touring budget and we can't do 50 percent capacity venues and stuff like that we just can't no. survive like that no. and uh, i think honestly the real i mean we definitely love playing don't have any intention of packing it in as far as I know, but I think the real uh, <laughs> strength of this band is is songwriting and making records, and that's what I like doing. So I've, I, even though it's taken a huge bite out of our budget, I mean, I, I've really enjoyed being able to stop and focus on making a record without stopping every 15 minutes to go do a gig. Uh, but I do look forward to the time when we can get back out on the road and and uh, bring it to the people, as as you would say. But uh, right now, I think we're just taking it one day at a time. And, uh, so that that's that's my take on it. Yeah, it was really it was really strange being in Nashville last weekend. And first, I mean, we go there. We've been there quite often, but it was weird because the bars all closed at ten thirty. Yeah. And um, you know, we were on Broadway at uh, six o'clock. Um, we. We, just, we figured it would be we figured it would be okay to be there about six o'clock and at six o'clock there were lines people were waiting an hour to get into a bar and i'm like okay this is not what i i mean i didn't yeah, expect that it's, so, it's like it'd be almost more dangerous to do it that way to let people be packed in waiting to get into these places that would be just let them in and get a seat oh, you know yeah but they I, were not i mean they they weren't i mean nobody was socially distanced when you're standing in line there yeah. was just a there was just a line of people so it, you know it was you can still hear bands outside and they were had full bands, which I thought was pretty impressive because I wasn't yeah. sure exactly what I was going to hear at all. But um, that was kind of a bit of a letdown, but it wasn't, you know, I just, I wasn't sure exactly what to expect. I thought five o'clock would be there early enough for six o'clock to at least get in, listen oh, to a little no, bit of music, no. have some dinner and, and whatever. I really didn't uh, well, ex expect it to be 21st century downtown Nashville, man. It's that went out the window a couple of years ago it seems yeah because like. i was down when i've been down there before you know usually at that time it's not it's not as busy and you may yeah. have to wait a little bit but it wasn't but yeah it was crazy and i didn't think you know, about the you got to go down there on monday afternoon at like two forty four or two o'clock or something if you want to well, have any kind of you know peaceful listening experience like yeah well, when we rolled out of the hotel at sunday morning at 11 and you know drove past broadway or whatever you could have gone in then and there were bars playing and i mean yeah. obviously you know that but but uh yeah that we weren't doing that then so we ended up, well, ended up you know and that's it's limited to just that downtown area none of the clubs are actually open yeah like, jen's not doing shows i mean they're doing virtual they're doing you know live broadcast stuff from the venues but they're not there's no bands i mean nobody's on the road obviously so it's all right people that are coming in just for the that or their local you know nationals that happen to live in the nashville area but yeah and it's it's it's, I mean, it's great that those honky tonks are able to fire up and make money because we, you know, the city needs the tourism dollars and stuff. But I'm really worried about some of these venues that, you know, they've got, I mean, other than selling t-shirts and doing live streams, they've got nothing coming in. Other than I mean, there's an aid package, I guess, now that's happening. The the government is going to is gonna bail them out to a certain degree, but how long? Right, yeah. 
stretch that, you know? Yeah. Um, actually, we're going to be talking to one of the guys that's helping do that uh, here coming up too. Um, is it, we make music, we make, and yeah, something know. like that is the, is the, uh, is the, uh, the thing he's working on. Is it a Nashville based thing or is it just, a... no, it's a national based thing. Um, it's called, we make events. Um, it's oh, yeah, the producers yeah. and, and the, those guys. The Facebook things for it. Yeah. 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 So yeah, we're, uh, I know one of the, we know one of the guys that's started that process, started that project is really pushing forward. So, uh, we're talking to him actually pretty, uh, tomorrow. Awesome. Um, be coming up on that show but um yeah that was that was really um you know you really don't think about that stuff i don't think anybody's really thought much about what all else is affected you know you you talk about industry and that kind of stuff but it's it's the entertainment industry is just de is just yeah it's just de de well, it's, it's, gutted. it's all the little people it's all the little, it's everybody for every venue that you go to everybody who works from cleaning the bathrooms to serving hot dogs to selling beers to taking tickets at the door every one of these those people were you know let's say my friend of mine you know rodney you know he was getting into setting up so he got into the union and when when you know whenever a band comes into town he would go to the stadium they would call him up say hey we need x amount of people to come and he was getting to the point where they, he's getting called every time helping set up the stage he got into lighting got on the stuff you know he was expecting this to be a you know for this year you know he had a bunch lined up and you know it's zip well, so, I mean, our bass player does some of that stuff for Crew One. Right, uh, and it's it is good money. I mean, I got my my old bass player uh, Brian is he's a uh, stage manager for Styx. He's been he was in the air on the way to a gig that got a, actually a weekend full of gigs that got wow. canceled and had to be rerouted back to Florida to his home in Florida. Um, I don't. We have lots of friends that are in you know work yeah. for. You know, I mean, we have friends that work for Kiss. That well, Tyson Leslie, you know, you know, you know him, don't you? I mean, I'm being in Nashville. Tyson Leslie. Yeah, he were playing. Okay, so he was he he went he was actually remember he went to what was it, Texas, Texas or something like that. Got all the way out there, and then shit got canceled. So he just played some local gigs, and then tried to get his ass back to Nashville, and it yeah. was a pain in the ass right there. That COVID situation. There was a lot of people that you know got caught into that. And yeah, uh, stuff on everybody for sure. Uh, yeah. So, so you mentioned the will weather this. Yeah, it'll yeah. Be interesting to see. You mentioned earlier about the bands locally playing live stream gigs or anything. Have you guys done any live stream shows, or are you planning to do any? I did a thing on my solo page, uh, uh, a website out of the UK that has done some, has like written about us a couple times. They reached out and said, "Hey, would you mind doing? I want to do a series of artists, you know, doing a couple songs thing." And I, I'm always real leery about that i can barely operate the technology to get this thing going today so i didn't want to do it and have it sound like a bucket of ass so i told the guy let me, let me mess around with it and see if i need to actually put a mic up and uh and so i did i experimented with it i did one for him and then people dug it so i just kept doing one every day and i went back through like everything i've ever written and pulled out i tried to pull out stuff that we don't do necessarily then i let people ask for whatever and, I, and it, it ended up being educational because i don't even remember writing some of those songs and i had to go back and learn them and uh and so i did like i don't know 50 of those over the course of a couple months and try to put you know i thought i'd do like four or five in a day and space them out but um as a band if we'd had the correct venue to do it in where we could have had a really good controlled audio video situation maybe would have gone for but we didn't even play together or we didn't anything see each for, other for quite some time yeah everybody at one time so well, you guys are all a bunch of germy, germy bastards. So, well, was it wasn't. Yeah, that's so much sad. <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you what, our bass player absconded to Georgia to hang out with his family. At the oh, yeah, he's going to Georgia, house, bringing that shit back, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he goes to the hotbed and hangs out down there for a while um, in case it was the end of the world. But, uh, yeah, we had – and also, man, we had – right before this whole thing happened, a tornado came through. Yeah, fine. So our, yeah. our guitarist, Patrick, his house got hit. Wow. So he was doing oh. with all that. It just wasn't – at all the nothing aligned so it was that we just didn't work together for i mean we worked 2020s on this has been fantastic right <laughs> well you know what i'll tell you what i didn't the first few weeks i was like this is nice man because i had been recovered from the surgery thing anyway so i was fine with resting i i was trying not to have to sing for right. three hours you know a, a night right. and so it was, it was fine by me until it wasn't fine and i started getting bored and we're like man we need to 
yeah. you know, and then we're going to the studio trying to knock this stuff out and realizing that our, you know, we our chops have atrophied because we have not been playing together. So yeah, it'll be good to get just even getting in the room and playing. So you those know. those tracks that you were talking about, you're you're playing on that UK deal. Are those available for anybody to watch, or are they? Yeah, if you go on my, it's, I guess they're still up on my Facebook page. It's just Denny Smith Facebook slash. Okay. Denny. No, I like to. I'd like to listen to them. I would love it's to. Just listen a bunch to of stuff. I mean, there's stuff from previous bands, and I don't. Yeah, that's fine. I might have done a couple cover tunes or something. They're rough around the edges, man. It's just me into an iPhone, so. You know, we are jonesing for live type music, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> right now, it's like I'll take <laughs> Kermit the Frog singing something. I don't care. You get a nice, you get a nice tour of my house. I try to do it from a different angle every time, so you can uh, get a feel from my. Actually, what's what's funny is Kevin Cronin's been doing his little Cronin's uh, camp, Camp Cronin. Yeah. Have you seen that? No, and it's it's great. I mean, he's like every day. I guess he's getting ready to write a book, so he's he's writing. Every day he, he talks about a song or two that they did for REO and then he plays it on acoustic. And, you know, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not. He hits it sometimes, he, but it's all in fun and jest. And, yeah. but you're, but it, just the stories and just doing that. And he's in part of his house here and part of his house here. And he has his daughter over one day. That kind of shit. I mean, 2020, if anything, has brought stuff like that out. And it's kind yeah. of been interesting to see people out of their element you know these are stars that are just definitely that too man because that's so. you, you know you can't hide behind anything man there's does it you no. know so, you can put it whatever filter you want on the picture but warps right. it all year yeah and, and these and, people and, that have actually done this and with the bad haircuts and the and you know sitting around their pajamas and stuff like that i think people really like that and i, I do personally i like to see yeah. that part of people so no, I'd rather, plus it's some of these bands i mean a lot of these and I, i'm not going to point any fingers but that you know some of these dudes that are so used to relying on backing tracks and stuff that you know now you've got <laughs> I, Dennis uses not backing me. tracks in his band <laughs> no no I've just heard him sing before I, I know that there's somebody who's I'm going to point to a shirt but I'm not going to point to mine <laughs> not, yeah your vintage shirt is backing tracks yeah I have it well, well anyhow, let's, let's jump back anyway. to your album yeah uh, yes, yes. <laughs> what formats are you guys going to release that album on? Like, are you doing any uh, vinyl or anything? Well, we did. No, we, well, that may still happen. I, I don't know. Um, we talked about it, but man, we were, I'll be honest, we were ner nervous about even being able to sell enough CDs to break even on this without doing, we're so used to going out and selling it on the, the show, you know? Um, yeah. And we kind of, we didn't take a bath on the last record, but the last record, we funded it. So, and we shopped it after we did the thing. And so where normally we would make all our money back on our initial sales, we gave it to another record label and took a greatly diminished split because that's how that works, obviously. Yeah. And it was the first record that I think, I don't know that we actually recouped our budget. So no. going into this one, it's like, man, we got to be real careful. We don't, and we do, plus we, I mean, we do, we're very, uh, I want to say frugal because we don't, cut corners but we tr we did a lot of this at home and tried to keep the budget as low as we could because we knew we may not play for the next year this may come out and it may only sell for the first month and then but we're used to stretching them out taking them out for two years and and traveling around with it and getting it into the right ears and we may not have that opportunity this time so we did just cds but we did do there are two more tracks on the disc than there are on the version that you guys got from the, so we did put a couple bonus tracks on. And if we can do vinyl, I'd like to, cause oh, we throw that around to. for, and I'm a vinyl guy myself, he is. Um, yeah. It's just, it's one, it's cost prohibitive when you're ordering small quantities and stuff. And two, everything is delayed right now. Production on vinyl is a, an issue as well. So, you know, yeah. I think we're just gonna have to see what the future looks like before yeah. we start getting too crazy with it. I mean, uh, ultimately, we really need to play to get this thing out to more than just our fan base. Uh, that's been how we sort of, you know, obviously created our fan base to start with. But it's really tough to not be able to know. Well, we got these amount of gigs and these amount of places that. A lot of these people don't want uh, to buy things online. They want to come to your gigs and get turned on. And that's how you sell t-shirts. That's how you sell records and, and all that stuff. And 
So I don't think we're going to go too much crazy other than just the initial pressing of this thing until we see where we're at uh, in that respect going forward. That makes sense. I mean, you're, it's a different time for sure. Was well, we tried second? to sweeten the pot a little bit. We did, a, we did a comic book that goes with it um, <laughs> you you know, and try to make it like a, at least a more like a unique package compared to the last record not just you don't just get a guitar pick with it or whatever right we actually do a you know it's got a like a real legit comic that he put together so oh, cool you know we tried to try to you know pick it up a little bit in the merchandising department because but the same thing man you know you're used to you know we're not like obviously it's not like a, a big touring band that pressed up thousands of shirts for their 2020 tour or anything we we were already off and working on this, working towards this thing. So we don't have a bunch of merch that we're going to be stuck with. But I did make, I had a solo record that came out at the end of 2019 and I have a whole bunch of merch that says 2020 on it. And I played one show, you know, so it, I can only imagine what some of these bands that are doing these fire sales on their merch inventory. Are doing. It just got to be, we were just trying to be careful. You know what though, and being, and being kind of frugal and this would be kind of funny because I think it would be funny if you could just put a slash through the, the zero and put a one <laughs> because of how 2020 has been so fucked up. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I think if you could just spray paint like a, that kind of deal on her, people would fucking buy those things left and right. Cause well, you know, well, it was going to be 2020, but no. I want to go trademark that because I'm sure somebody's thought I'm telling it. you, Gene, if Gene Simmons is listening, he's like going, Ooh, that's good. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were doing, I don't know if you saw it, but I saw they're you know, doing all those repress shirts of all the Oh, they're selling all their stuff that they had. Where we would have yeah. well, they changed it. Yeah. They changed it to the what would have been the end of the road or <laughs> yeah. whatever. I saw a shirt like that <laughs> with all not the dates. Sit on a bunch with of all shirts, the dates on I there. It. <laughs> there. There were shows that didn't happen in 2020 or something right. is the title of the show. I mean, Could have been here. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so so back to the record. Alan, what's your favorite song on the record? Very first track, I'm all right. Yeah. I love that. I, or Dennis, what about you? It's between that and uh Ro, the Rose song. I, I, I like I like both those songs, but th that first song got me. I mean it hooked me right off the bat. And I like that. And that's Bill's that's Bill's trademark right there. Yeah, yeah it's right, gotta be right the first after, right after I reached out to you, Denny. Yeah. And you sent me the press kit. Yeah. I listened to the first song and I no immediately way. sent the link to Dennis and Bill. <laughs> Dennis was listening to it at work. And I and I actually <laughs> I got to about half that first song and I said, get these motherfuckers on. I said, I <laughs> like this. I, I really do. I, I mean seriously. I I, have, I was I, honestly but, I have never seen Dennis so excited about an independent artist that we've had on the show. And then I went back and I said, listen to that first and I was like, Oh my god, and I love you know, it's just you know, I'm, I'm seriously, I've been real happy with you guys. It's just so good. And like we said, rock is not dead. You yeah. just got to find them. You got to find it. And radio's not playing this shit. No. You know, well, that's so why you got it. Yeah, because <laughs> radio's not playing. There's plenty of bands like us that are making. Oh, yeah. There's a million bands like you guys, but nobody, nobody knows. Yeah, it's are. not force fed to you with an eyedropper in this exactly. shape. Of, you know. <laughs> <laughs> grow old and you're not going to find it but i mean so before we get out of here uh, out there you just got to want it i think bill's got a question yeah no i just wanted to say what my favorite song was since yeah <laughs> i asked about it to get a chance <laughs> <laughs> actually my favorite song on the record is in the wreckage yeah oh, that's well, a great I like song too i like that song a lot i have listened to that song probably more it just so i don't know so i said I don't, who wrote that song that's that's mine. Um, that's actually that's a that's a weird tune, man, because that was not su really supposed to be a great affairs song. I had we were working on the last record, and I cut the tr the acoustic track and a scratch vocal. I was in there doing guitars for something else. That's our engineer playing slide the all the slide on it. Michael, the, the our co-producer, he played the slide and the baritone guitar, and we had to. Uh, I I did it, and then I. I, the lyrics I had, they weren't really 100% realized. So it kind of just sat on the shelf. We put 10 and 2 out. It didn't go on there, obviously. And then when we came in to do this one, we were working on this. And I said, man, can I go in there and take another swing at that vocal while I'm here? And did it in the middle of a whole other session. And I, had, I talked Michael into playing some slide on it. I thought I was going to put it on my solo record. And then I, since Kenny was there, I said, man, can you 
he did some percussion and we didn't have a symbol we needed a symbol and there was actually an autographed symbol hanging on the wall in the studio from my old band former a billy baker that builds eric singer's drum kits now he it was his symbol was hanging on the wall cracked so he cracked it during a session while we were there one time and signed it we pulled it down off the wall just for the little symbol overdubs just to get those in there and michael did a quick mix of it and that's the mix that's that on the true, record it was, it was like kind of almost an afterthought and he talked me into using yeah, it as a great affairs thing. i mean i just felt like it was so good uh i didn't want to let it uh get relegated to a release somewhere later on we were talking about doing that ep at the time and i thought it was a perfect addition to that and it's a great song and it sounds great i mean everything i love everything about that and i i honestly almost had barely anything to do with it man it, uh, but it's just a great i think it's a great recording great mix great performance and uh and the lyrics are great. You think? It's good. Good. It is a good song. Yeah, it's just a great. It's just a great song. I, I mean, I listen to that song probably more than anything. That and Livia, I like the. I like the. Yeah. Uh, the single that's coming. That's you know that's out. So. And then another thing too, if if you listen to the album, there's all and being a musician too, and doing some recording, very few recording, nothing professional, but there's sounds in that thing, and I'm trying to figure out what they are. I'm like going, that's uh, a yeah. sound. It's like, what is that? Yeah, I like. It's like. That. Yeah, and that and that's kind of cool i like that i mean it's yeah, like it, it there, makes you think it's keyboards and it's not keyboards it's guitar i just right it, it is i mean there's some things that i'm like going what the fuck is that well that's one of the joys of the home recording that i've discovered the last few years that's man, cool, that there's man. nobody around and i don't yeah. have a clock ticking and i can sit and twiddle knobs all freaking day long and, and no one's gonna say shit about it it ain't gonna cost me any extra money you know it might kill my computer but you know i'll just sit and you know, crank on that stuff until, yeah. you know, until the neighbors tell me to knock the shit off. But um, it doesn't cost you anything, but you can get gold out of it. Yeah. Be honest. I mean, seriously, you can, because I mean, there's, there's some things in there. I was like, I was listening to that going, and I, I would back it up. I'm like, what the fuck is that? And I'm like, okay, I think I know. You know, it's like, but I, it is, it, it, but the thing is, it makes me think and it makes me, that's why I'm drawn into it. I'm yeah, like, that's well, the lead, that's I the stuff really you put in. We'll lean into the mix and try and figure out what the hell it is they're hearing. That's sometimes that ear, <laughs> not actually it puts it over the, it puts it over the top, man, you know? Yeah. No, I love it. I Brings love it. You got a fan. And when you come to Evansville, I'm going to be there, dude. I'm going to meet you guys. Awesome. It's right. going to be awesome. Cool. Well, right, before sure we get out of here. Oh. Does not get to play that. <laughs> Say that again. I said, I'm going to make sure the Philharmonic does not get to play that night. I'm going to <laughs> Yeah. Well, Dennis sitting there. We're coming anyway. You know what? <laughs> if you guys show up, I'm just going to have to get, I'll probably get sick and then I'll. I'll you, do have to wear, you do have to wear a suit and tie at our gigs, though. Right? Yeah. The, Balkan, the Balkan and the Philharmonic place is not that far apart. I can make it there in about there five minutes. <laughs> we're playing a whole long night that night. We're doing a whole evening with. Yeah, I'll be done by nine. I'll be, I'll be good. So. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll still be playing. All right. Well, uh, Tell the listeners again about the title of the album, when it's coming out, and how they can find you guys on the internet. Everybody Moves, Nobody Gets Hurt comes out October 2nd. Uh, you can pre-order it now on our website, thegreataffairs.com. It's right there on the main page. Uh, it's on the store link as well. If you want to click on the store page, there's all kinds of other stuff over there. But uh, you want to get the version with the comic, of course, the deluxe Gene Simmons endorsed version. Uh, <laughs> But you can free save it on all the other streaming, Spotify and all the Apple Music, all that crap where we, you know, so we can get some pennies on the dollar there. Uh, or you can buy this, the physical version directly from us. Be a real man, buy the buy the CD. Yeah, and then maybe once, we, the once, once we've reeled you in and charged you for all this stuff, <laughs> then maybe we'll press that vinyl yeah. and get you a second time. because that's. Oh like yeah, no, I'm going to get you that. I'm going to get that one too. <laughs> Two extra pages of the count. And then you can put it out in that in that purple, that Paul purple. Oh, you need yeah. to you need to put it out in the in the uh, marble like the like the original Kiss record was redone in the marble thing. Yeah, you get it. Bill's oh, got yeah. the marble. It's completely white with one streak of black. <laughs> <laughs> Bill got the cheap marble. <laughs> Whatever, man. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, with that piece. <laughs> we appreciate you guys coming on the show. Hang out for a second, and we'll take us out of here. Thanks, Thanks for us. Y'all know the deal. Visit us on agesofrock.com. Check out our social media and our past episodes. And until next time, peace out, folks.
Thanks for listening to the Ages of Rock podcast. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and most importantly, tell all your friends. Remember, you're never too old to rock. Until the next episode, peace out, folks.